The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Let me be your lighthouse so I can show you the Hello, this is Patty Hunter, and this is my show today, Patty's Page. I have a special Skype guest, and his name is Jeffrey Straker, and he's from Canada, no less, and we're going to be talking with him today. He is a singer, songwriter, and he has done music videos and CDs. So hopefully I am going to uh, have a, at least a half hour talk with him and I'm introducing you to Jeffrey Straker. Be back in a moment. Well, good afternoon, Jeffrey Straker. Yeah, good afternoon, Patty. Oh, welcome to my show, Patty's Page, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I hope you uh, are having good weather down there, up there, somewhere. Yeah, it's really it's really good, actually. So, where were you born? Well, I was born in a small town in the prairies of Canada. Um, Saskatchewan. It has about 300 people, so it's, it's a pretty teeny place. Which province? In Saskatchewan, and the town is called uh, Punishai. It's a, it's a Cree Indian word. Actually, so it's a it's a, a town that has a lot of First Nations people living right. Well, um, what's the nearest large town like uh, that is close to, so we can get a image of, as to where it be? Uh, uh, Saskatoon is probably the biggest closest yeah. town. Cool. So your mom and dad were uh, musicians, or? Uh, yeah, my mom and dad were both mus musicians. My mom still is. Um, my mom played, plays the piano, played the piano when I was growing up, and um, still plays, and she played the organ in church, and my dad, for a while, played the five-string banjo. Oh, my goodness. That doesn't anymore. Um, all of my grandparents were um, pretty musical, too, so, you know, like, I had a grandma who played guitar and sang, and another grandma who played the fiddle, and another grandma who um, it was a really good singer and mandolin player, so there was... Music. There has been music through our family for uh, a long time. I had a great grandma actually, who I knew for a part of my life, who was also really musical too. So it's a, it's certainly a genetic thing. So you married? Am I married? Yeah. No. Oh, you gotta find someone. Okay. <laughs> At what age did you start learning about music, understanding it, uh, playing it, or whatever? Were you quite young? Well, I started. Um, Sort of showing an affinity for the piano that my parents had in their house when I was pretty young, like I'd say maybe like four. Oh, but then wow. my mom put me in piano lessons when I was six, and there was a local teacher in the little town that I grew up in, and her name was Mrs. Young, Mrs. Vicky Young, and she was a really good music teacher. And she um, she was one of those amazing people who, beyond just teaching, like she actually really motivated me anyway. Um, to just want to be better uh, at oh. the piano. And, and, and she really sort of um, made me want to just, you know, get good at being a musician. And that's, I think that's beyond being a teacher. That, that's something, she had a very special sort of gift. And um, I'm very grateful for her to do that. So it's a combination of my mom and dad sort of realizing that, you know, maybe I had some interest in, in music and then her actually being there to sort of help that along. She was your mentor. Kind of, you know, it made it all happen. Was she your mentor? Uh, not really a mentor in a way. Like, I don't, I don't really know if I've ever really had a mentor. I've had people who I've looked to as kind of like sort of bits of inspiration here and there across time. Um, we had this neighbor guy who lived on sort of the next farm 
mm-hmm. when I was growing up, and his his name was Carl, and and Carl sort of was one of these guys who played in old time bands in in our neck of the woods, so to speak. And he um, you know, he played the accordion and the fiddle and the guitar and the banjo. He kind of played everything, and he and he had this amazing ear, and he could play anything he heard. He could just play it. And I really kind of always marveled at him because I was studying. You know, when you start lessons, it's all by notes, right? And I, I was like, well, there's this guy. He, he doesn't read notes. I mean, he does, but I mean, he plays by ear. So he was a real inspiration from me early on, realizing that, like, there was more to music than, you know, learning by notes. So he, I think, seeing that early on really helped me expand out into sort of the land of creating my own stuff kind of from ear, you know. So you write your own. Yeah. And compose. Yeah. Did you go to university to learn the mechanics of it, music? Uh, no, but I mean, it was, I kind of, did, I did an equivalent of university. Like, I studied at a conservatory when I was um, 16, 17, 18, oh. for those three years. And then uh, I did an extra year at that conservatory, which was at a university, um, when I was 19. And then I ended up getting my diploma, my licentiate former, performer's diploma in piano from... Trinity College in London wow. when I was 19. So that was, I mean, it was a big diploma. Um, but after that, I actually went to university studying science. And I, I'm, uh, I studied plant biology and biochemistry and all sorts of scientific things. I took biochemistry. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, do you do solo acts or do you have a band or... Well, it, well, since I'm a singer-songwriter, like yeah. a singer-songwriter pianist, by virtue of that, what I do is really versatile um, in that I can perform my stuff solo because it's all written at a piano, me and a piano. Um, however, if the booking or the venue is big enough, I can add musicians in as the booking sees fit. So often I'll perform as a trio with piano, my guitar player, and maybe add in a vocalist or a cello player or something. But sometimes if the gig is big enough, I'll have a full band, like with a drummer and a bass player, too. Orchestra. But I also have my stuff orchestrated for, um, mm. my songs orchestrated for full orchestra, and I've done several full orchestra shows, too, with just me and a piano and an orchestra of 50 players. So it really depends on the, the booking. And I think that's one of the great things that I really like about being a singer-songwriter is you're this individual, but you can always be surrounded by people. You do house, uh, what do you call it? What's it called? House um, concerts. Uh, yeah, concerts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do house concerts. Um, house concerts are a great way for singer songwriters to um, get up close and get to meet people who might be interested in their music. Um, and 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 the way house con- house concerts are, you know, it's like somewhere from twenty to. 30 or sometimes 40 people, people wow. in a house and, and they, they, they you know, sort of pay an admission like they would to any show at a theater or anything and they come and they sometimes bring a snack and a drink or whatever and um, the beauty of it is that you know, the, the songwriter or performer gets to tell some stories in between the songs and give some background on where the songs came from and really? you know, sort of talk back and forth with the audience and it's a really nice experience and I love doing them and I've done them all across Canada at this point, I think in every province now, maybe except Newfoundland actually. Um, but yeah, they've been really great. And and often what you find is that uh, people who might like your music and become a fan, when you meet them at a house concert, they kind of can get really invested in what you're doing and they can be great word of mouth spreaders um, and you know tell other people about it too. So I find house concerts really fun and also like a really good way to get your music out there. I mean, I listen to your music. You're 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 really good. I mean, you're excellent, man. Oh, thanks. You're bravo, maestro. I must say, uh, well, thank some you. I listen to all of your videos. Well, the ones that you had sent me, and oh my goodness. I mean, who taught you to sing? Uh, you know, I I have very little vocal training. Um, but you're good. Part of it is that I, my 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 piano was the thing that I studied for all those years of music training. But when I started sort of dabbling in, you know, writing my own songs and, and kind of singing versus just playing the piano, 
Yeah. I, you know, as one does, I threw myself out there into some open mic nights and things like that in Toronto. And you, I kind of got the sense pretty quick that I was like, you know, although I, I recognize that I'm a pretty strong piano player, my vocal chops were, were I would say, av- average. And I was like, I, there's room for improvement here. So I found this teacher in Toronto, and I, and I took lessons from her for like two years. Oh, yeah. And she was, she was really, you know, I kind of went every other week or every week or whatever, whatever it fit. And she was great. And then, like, she was a classically trained opera singer, but there was no intention of me getting that kind of training. Rather, it was more just um, wanting to learn some proper technique and learning how to support a sound and even discovering what the range of my voice was. Like, I didn't know any of this. She was a fantastic teacher, and we're actually really good friends to this day. So just a little bit of vocal training, but um, it was really helpful. And I, there's a lot of singers out there who they're like, oh, I don't want to take singing lessons because I don't want to sound trained it's, so to speak no it's but, nice to be able to control to have yeah, structure yeah it's more about that and um are you tenor uh, i suppose so like yeah. i mean in the world of music that i'm in we don't you don't really think of it that way but i i, I think what my, my range would be tenor if, if i were like to sing in a choir or something. would you sing with other people or just by yourself or do you um well, I mean, my stuff is pretty much solo in right. terms of um, yeah. the voices. And sometimes I have a harmony, a harmony singer singing with me in my show. Usually, a female harmony voice. Sometimes yeah. some of the band will sing harmonies too, but really, it's centered around the lead vocal and, and the, the lyrics. You know. Do they co? Does anyone co-write with you? Uh, only a little bit, but yes. Um, on my last record that I put out, which was this March. Oh. 2015. There's um. It's a call. It's a call. Mm-hmm. It's, it's called North Star Falling. North Star Falling. North Star Falling. There's a there's three co-writes on there. So yeah, I I, I did more co-writing on this one than I've ever done. Um, I really I, I'm I really like solo writing. Like I'm just a person who really a creature who likes solo writing. But I also have become really aware that um, co-writing can be really awesome if the chemistry between the writers is good. Like, there has to be this really interesting chemistry or you're probably not going to get a very good result. You have to click. Yeah. In other words. What was your first CD, then? If, uh... It's called Songs from Highway 15. Songs from Highway 15. There's another one called Vagabond? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. So how many do you have? There are six. Oh, my stars. <laughs> And you're very good, and, and you're improving as each time you make a new CD and all oh. that. Oh, you, you're, you're excellent. Um, you have music videos as well? Yeah, I do. I have quite a few videos. Like, there's a com- uh, an array of, like, videos that, you know, we did, like, a real deal music video. Some of them have been on video television, and um, there's a lot of live videos, too, like, of me... In studio, or me, I did, I did some uh, some living room sessions. Um, some, some of me on YouTube at just like at, at shows that I've done. So I think there's about hundred of them up at this point. But they all sort of show something different. Um, so yeah, lots lots of video stuff. I think you you, you have to have video content these days yeah. online because people are such video creatures. Are you uh, on MTV? Well, MTV doesn't around? really show music videos anymore. So oh. no, no one's on MTV with music videos. Oh, what um, happened? And even uh, Much Music in Canada really doesn't show much by way of music videos anymore. But in the yeah. past, I have had videos on Much Music in Canada, Much More Music. Um, they were That was really actually great. Like, the exposure was fantastic. But their, video, their music video content has really dwindled. So YouTube has taken over. Yeah. Um, where have you toured? Um... Is it just Canada or elsewhere? Well, I really focus on touring in Canada. That's my main thing. Um, So lots in Canada. I do do about 100 shows a year. Oh, wow. Um, And uh, with this last record, I've been coast to coast already and i'm and i've kind of done like half the coast to coast again and so i'm, I'm about to start start doing it again before the end of the year um touring is the main thrust of what i do um okay. but in, in addition to canada i do like i 
I've done a little bit of stuff in the U.S., but it's 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 pretty cumbersome, so I don't go there a lot. Um, mm, it's too bad. I, I would like to go there more, but when you do it, um, I think to go to the U.S. and perhaps do some house concerts would be great. Like I'd love to do that. But when I go and when you do shows that are like marketed in a, in a club and like you know they're they're they're, they're listed on the internet and stuff, you have to go through all the proper procedures of um, getting a, a P two visa because uh, oh. the, the American government isn't so uh, uh, fond of making it easy for Canadians to perform in the U.S. So it's expensive. Buying this visa is very expensive, and you have those lead times and timelines, and it's it's it's. I mean, it's not it's not difficult, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So <laughs> you know, uh, the the gig, the the shows in the U.S. would have to be. You know, pay fairly well to make big, it all worthwhile. Big one, yeah. But um, but house concerts in the U.S. are something I'm certainly interested in. So if anybody watches your this show, this yeah. show and mm-hmm. is interested, they should contact me or Patty. All right. Um, <laughs> and um, but in other places I've performed too. Like I performed in, in a Latin America. I've got an audience in Latin America. Um, because in uh, 2014 I won the. Vigna Del Mar International Song Competition, and that that was broadcast on uh, Spanish-speaking TV all over the world. Oh. And so, so a lot of Latin Americans know my music. Um, so I've been to Chile and Peru and Mexico. Um, so yeah, that takes me away too. I got Spanish blood in my background as well, eh? I have none. Oh, mercy for heavens. Do you, do you sing in Spanish or just English? Just English. Just English? Ah, uh, it's getting on towards the end of the show. I'm just uh, getting warmed up. Uh-huh. We got about seven minutes. Okay, we'll we'll continue. Um, how many music videos have you done? Did you say? Well, one I mean, <laughs> official music videos. I don't. I don't know. Like quite a few. There, there's probably. If you count all the live content and all the in studio stuff, as well as the official music videos, there's probably like a hundred on YouTube. I, I don't, I don't know, something like that. Well, slings and arrows. Uh, that's my favorite. We'll talk about that because we're going to show that at the end of the uh, our interview. Okay. So why did you write that? Um. When I why did I write it? I mean, it was clearly something I guess that I was feeling. I mean, it's a song about. You know, try to set your crap aside. I guess really <laughs> just live life in the moment. Um, yeah, I hear and, you. And, and as such, it's an upbeat, positive, happy song. You know, um, lyrics it, are good. Great. You know, so and and uh, and, and the, fun, the funny thing was, like when I wrote that, I kind of thought, oh, this is a bit of a, you know, uh, maybe like a B side sort of thing. You know what I mean? But it's funny how it has caught a lot of people's ears. And like I'll go do a show in some places where I've never been before. And and someone will say at the break, like, are you gonna play Slings and Arrows? And I, I always kind of find it. Zero funny. in on that. That's lovely. I like that one. Cool. Um, so, uh, in the future, where will you be touring? Um, up until the end of 2015, mm-hmm. it's pretty much Canadian dates. So I'll be I'll be between like the prairies of Canada, like the middle, way out to the east coast again. Yeah. Um, Toronto. And, and then, um, you know, there's shows, you know, in Toronto and Winnipeg and all, all, all over the, the place. Um, so that'll keep me really busy right through till December. But uh, an interesting project that's fallen onto my plate for the fall is that I, I got funding, sort of a commission, if you will, to um, write music for a musical. Oh. There's a, a playwright in Canada who is writing the, the book part of the musical. And I've been sort of, um, I've been asked to write some songs. Which I've never done before for for you know for music theater, so it's a new uh, challenge, and I'm really excited about it. It should be great. So you put lyrics as well as instrumental. It's just oh yeah. So the music and lyrics um, for songs that'll go in this musical, and and we you know we're not we're only getting started, so we're not sort of even talking about what the story's about or anything. But um, it's neat because there's actually some interest growing already, and um, you never know where these things are going to go, right? You just you do it and. Do it because you love it and, and uh, see what happens. So um, when you're going to be doing this musical, I'll just ask, um, they give you a theme of what it is and you have to write it around it or for it? Or? Well, um, the way our process goes is 
the woman who's writing the book, mm -hmm. um, she's writing the, the you know the plot line, so to speak, and she's developed the characters. And I'm going to, I'm reading what she's writing in terms of a story, and I'm sort of thinking, what do I think would fit in yeah. terms of a song yeah. into her story to oh. help help tell the story. So, so it all take tidbits from her storyline and, and then expand a little bit. Um, and certain through certain moments of the play, it'll 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 transition to a song. Oh, I would love to see that show. Oh well, I'll keep you posted. Um, so what would you like to say to my audience to encourage well, them to become what they want to be? Because you sound like you've been working really hard to get where you're going, and you and and you're still getting stronger and stronger, and and I like that. In a... um, hmm. Sorry, say, say, that, say that again, Patty. The first part of your question, what would I like to say to your audience to... To help and encourage them to follow their dream, like you did. Ah. Well, I'll answer that by a little bit of a story. Um, I used to have a job in an office doing marketing. Right. And uh, it was oh. in Toronto, and I had this interesting incident where I visited a great aunt of mine in an old folks' home, and she had Alzheimer's. Oh. And I never, I had not, to that point, I had not been that up close to Alzheimer's before, and I didn't really know much about it. But what I, I, I went to visit this great aunt of mine with my grandmother, and they were sisters, if you follow my story here. And But the thing that really hit me that day was that my aunt, who had Alzheimer's, no longer knew her own sister. Like it was quite apparent that she had no idea who this person was. And so what hit me that day was, and, and you know, you're either spiritual and willing to receive these signs or not. Uh, and I didn't really think I was incredibly, you know, spiritual, but apparently I am. Because, like, I, I took this as, like, some kind of crazy sign, if you will, that I was like, because what, what I realized was, I, I don't know, you don't know, your viewers don't know, if... In this, as this example, if we're going to have Alzheimer's in, in 20, 30, 10 years, we just don't know. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Like, no, there's no guarantee of anything. And that sounds kind of ominous, but it also can be incredibly motivating because I took it as motivating because I thought, well, if that's the case, which it is, why wouldn't you try to do, use each day to do exactly what it is that you want to do? Like, why wouldn't you at least try like carve out a little part of each day and use it to the utmost because there's no guarantee of anything really you, know? you could um, go to more and, and i think it's just that that's just how i started to look at life from that moment on when i visited mary grant mary in that in that old folks home and i have found that to be the most motivating thing i think in my life and it's really like i walked out of the home that day called my boss quit my job and was like, I'm gonna try music full time and this is gonna work or not, but at least I won't be that person at the dinner party in 20 years saying, you know, wish I woulda, wish I coulda. You know, I'll be like, I tried that, you know, it worked or it didn't. So I guess my thought to anyone if you spy at that story is like, there's, you know, you just never know what's gonna happen. So with the time that you've got, even if you can't jump into your dream full time, at least carve out a tiny part of your dream and pursue it. Dang, you're good. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on to my show. Oh, uh, thanks for having me. Oh, nice to be had. <laughs> 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 Anyways, well, I'm glad uh, we are talking with each other, and thank you so much for coming yeah. and talking with me. It's great. It's great. All the way in Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Exactly. You should come here, man. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for coming on to my show, Jeffrey Straker. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I'd like to see you next week. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye. Bye. I've got this new tune I got for the rehearsal today. I call this Slings and Arrows. It's got a... Hey, how are you guys doing? It's got uh, a lot of horns in it, so it's going to start out with a horn section. I should take it. Check that out. Um... Um, little horn section to start it out. I'm gonna count it in, and then the drums will take off right away with the, with the tempo. Pretty good, pretty good beat to it. Up tempo. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, hey, hey. Awesome. Good to see you guys. How are you guys doing? Um, just kind of got a 40s, 50s vibe to it. Pretty excited about that. How are you guys doing? Good to see you guys.
you good to see you. Um, and uh, the horn section, they just get to wail. I'm really excited about it. Mister, new tune for today. Thanks. Check this out. New tune for today. 40s, 50s feel. It's gonna be gonna be fun. I want to showcase some horns in this new tune. All right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this. All right. us all. 